So now we're going to look at some of the graphical representations of um, waves. In the previous section on simple harmonic motion, we kind of looked at one particular graph, and that was the displacement versus time graph. So we're just going to revisit that one again, just very briefly, just to remind you some of the things that we saw. But when you look at the displacement versus time graph, you are not so much looking at the wave motion. You really, what you're looking at is more one particular part of the medium, and you're watching that one particular part of the medium oscillate. And so it's representative of the wave motion, but it's not directly showing you the wave motion. It's really showing you one molecule or one particular spot on the medium. And uh, for displacement, since we're going to talk about vertical motion, instead of saying x and um, like I have on many of the other graphs, we're going to talk about the y direction. So there's the positive and negative y direction. And along this axis, we have the time. And time would probably be measured in um, seconds. So if we imagine a um, displacement versus time graph, it might look something like this. And so essentially what you're looking at is you're looking at one spot on the oscillator going up and down, up and down like this, right? So it goes to the positive y, it goes to the negative y, positive y, negative y. Um, so what we're essentially looking at is not so much overall the wave, but just one particular spot. Now, there's a couple of pieces of information that I can get off of this graph. One of those things, of course, is I, I can get the amplitude of this thing. So the amplitude would just simply be the maximum displacement. Um, the other thing that I can get off this graph, which we saw before, is that if I look at from this point, so here is the medium. It's been displaced in the positive y direction by its maximum amount. And it was here before. There was a, Previously it was here. And if I look along the time axis, I can see when was the last time that this guy was at, the, um, at that same uh, specific point. And so what I would find is that if I look at the distance between these two guys, this would represent the period it's the period of the simple harmonic oscillator, but the period of the simple harmonic oscillator is the same as the period of the wave's motion, the traveling wave's motion. So because the two are connected together, when I calculate the period of, the, of this little section of the medium, I'm essentially also calculating the, or finding the, the period of the wave motion or the, the wave's velocity or the, the wave propagation. And that's basically it. There's not really a lot more that you can do with this graph. You know, as far as the equation v is equal to lambda over t or lambda f, there was only one of these these three pieces, these four pieces of information that I could pull off of this thing, and that was basically the period. I cannot get the wavelength from it. There's nothing about it that reveals the velocity of the of the wave. I might be able to use this to get information about the velocity of the medium, right? The simple harmonic oscillator portion of it, but I I can't do anything to get the v for the the wave, and so I do have the period. And of course, if I have a period, I could calculate the frequency. But without the wavelength or v, there's really nowhere to go with this. Now, they might give you that information. They might tell you in a caption or tell you as part of a problem that here's a, a graph showing a wave with a traveling with a certain wave speed. And if they gave you the wave speed, you could figure out the wavelength. If they told you what the wavelength of this particular wave is, then you could figure out what the wave velocity is by combining it with the, the period. But otherwise, there's not a lot that you can do with this um, particular graph. So let's move on to the second type of graph. And I'm actually going to draw it twice. And I'm going to put one right on top of the other. So this, as it says, is displacement versus position. Now this is something we never looked at when we were talking about simple harmonic motion. Sorry, positive y. Positive y and negative y. This is also one of the reasons why we want to use the letter y instead of the letter x, because y represents the up and down motion, the displacement, while in this case, x would represent the position of the, of the wave. So this graph is basically a snapshot. It's like literally like a picture of the wave. If you could imagine like making waves on a slinky, then this would be like a snapshot of the wave frozen in time. So if we drew a wave that looks something like this,
trying to make that symmetric, although that looks pretty pretty horrible. But in any case, um, there's certain information that, that, that's kind of the same on these. I mean, of course, it's displacement versus time, displacement versus time, and then this is also displacement versus position. So, of course, I can get the amplitude off of this graph also. So that's one piece of information that they share um, in common. Um, however, when you think about horizontally what you get, when you go from one high point here to the next high point, that would not be the period because this axis represents the, um, the position of it. So this would be a length. And specifically, remember this is like a snapshot of the wave. I'm literally looking at a picture of the wave. So this is actually a crest. And then here is the next successive crest. So the distance between those guys, if you think about it, would have to be the wavelength. So this is a way that you might get the wavelength of a wave is by having a dis, uh, displacement versus position graph. Then what I used to get the period in the previous graph, I can now use to get the displacement, to get, sorry, the um, wavelength for this graph. Now that's basically all you can really do. Um, if we assume that the wave in this case is traveling to the right, and you have to be told this piece of information. Don't assume that the wave is traveling to the right. You'd have to be told. But remember, this is a snapshot of the wave. So the, this is actually, we're actually watching the wave move. This is not a snapshot of the wave. The displacement time graph is not a snapshot of the wave. It's showing you the motion of one little piece of the medium, but it's not a picture of the wave. This is not what the wave um, looks like. Um, and this does not tell me anything about the, the wavelength. So this guy does give me new information that I couldn't get from the previous graph, um, but there's really not a lot you can do with it. So in this case, I don't have the period or the frequency, but now I have lambda. So then that's a kind of a trade-off. So in the previous graph, I had the period, therefore the frequency, but no other information. Now I've got the wavelength, but I have no other information. I don't have the period or the frequency, and I don't have the, the wave velocity. So what I could do, though, in order to get the wave velocity is if this was at a time of, let's say, zero. So this is when the wave started. What I could do is look at a second position time graph. So in this case, we'll look at a position time graph a little bit later. We'll say that this is t equal to 0 0.2 seconds later, and it will look different. The wave will have moved to the right, and as the wave moves to the right, it'll look different in the new um, graph. So let's say that in this graph, it looks something like this, and I'm going to draw some dotted lines so I can see where the original graph past the equilibrium points. Do my best to draw this. So let's have the wave be in this position now. The wave is still traveling to the right. <coughs> so what, you, what you'll notice about this one is that the, the wave is traveling to the right, and so this crest has now moved over to here. So I can see corresponding positions Okay, so now what I need to do to figure out what is the um, what is the, the additional information that I can get. So between this graph at zero seconds and this graph, which is 0 0.2 seconds, if I can figure out how much the wave has moved over, I can figure out what part of the period that I have. So in this case, if you notice, the wave has moved over. Here's a full wavelength. So how much did the wave move over by? Well, it's moved over by a half of a wavelength. So this guy has moved over to the position, he's a crest, and he's moved over to exactly where the trough is. Well, the trough and the crest are exactly a half a wavelength away from each other. So this two diagrams have shown what the wave looks like as it moves through one half of a wavelength. That means that this must be one half of the period. If I had moved over a quarter of the wavelength, if I had moved over one quarter of the wavelength, which would look like this, so if I just slid this guy over to the right, the next thing behind this guy, as the wave moves to the right, the next thing that will follow behind the crest will be another trough. So if I allowed only this much of the, of the trough, so this is only a quarter of a wave, one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, 
four quarters, then this would only be a quarter of the wave. So in this particular example, I allowed half of the wavelength to move over in 0.2 seconds. That means that the period, this must be half the period, therefore the period must be 0.4 seconds. If I had shown you a picture where it looked like this, where it had moved over a quarter of a wavelength, then I would need to multiply this number by 4 in order to figure out the period. If I allowed it to move over by 3 quarters of a wavelength, if it had moved over by 3 quarters of a wavelength, then I would have multiplied by 4 thirds to come up with the, with the number. But by having two of these graphs and knowing the time difference between the two, I can work out how far, what the period of this graph must be by just simply thinking about what fraction of the wavelength has it moved over by from one picture to the other. This is like a very common problem that you would see um, that would be asked by the IBO. It involves a lot of the, um, the concepts of, of wave motion, um, but allows you to pull enough information off of the graph to start going to this equation and, and start solving for velocities or wavelength or for um, periods or frequency and to go deeper with the with the problem. So these are the two types of graphs we'll look at displacement versus time which we've already looked at with simple harmonic motion and then the displacement versus position graph.